Hi everyone, Elliot Jacobson here for Disaster Diaries. It is Monday, August 30th, 2021. And no, the temperature of the planet has not risen by 2 degrees C from pre-industrial times. I don't care what he says. That hasn't happened. And in this video, I want to give you some evidence of um, the actual amount of total warming that has taken place from anthropogenic greenhouse gas release since 1750. Now, when we talk about a baseline for our total warming, there are a few points we need to keep in mind. First of all, a baseline should never be a single year. Single years have a lot of variability, and we could certainly cherry pick a particular year that had a high amount or a low, a low global temperature, and if we were to use that one, we could manipulate the total amount of rise from that cherry picked year. So it's never a good idea to pick a single year. That's why the IPCC actually chooses a 50 year baseline. And that's why as we go forward, we work over 30 year um, baselines. So also, if we go back to 1750 as, for example, where we want to start our baseline, then that happened to be in the middle or towards the end of what's called the mini ice age, which started about four or 500 years earlier, where essentially global temperatures dropped by up to about half degree C for a period of hundreds of years. So if we want to cherry pick a period of time, we could as easily go back to centuries before that when the temperature was above um, the sort of long-term average. And so we would even have less warming. So when you're going to choose a year, make sure it's a year that isn't in the middle of some sort of long-term uh, climatic period anyway uh, that skews your results. And look, all baselines are equivalent as long as we agree on them. It doesn't matter what baseline we choose. We just don't want to make it confusing by saying, well, the baseline is this or it's that, or let's use this one or that one so that we can get the particular result we want to say. All right, so the IPCC has chosen 1850 to 1900. That's fine. Um, there's another very interesting result that you might think about, and this is that, that initial CO2 that was released from 1750 to 1850 was very dirty, right? That period was extraordinarily dirty. Picture in your mind industrial London or Paris during the um, latter 18th century or early 19th century, and you picture just this pollution spewing into the atmosphere, right, from coal and wood burning just continuously, right? And, and um, or think about your image of the old uh, trains that used to run on steam that would just burn massive amounts of coal and wood. And we see all of this soot and ash going in the atmosphere. So it is fully possible that owing to uh, the aerosol masking effect and other um, uh, global dimming, if you like, that the original CO2 that release was released was sufficiently dirty to actually cool the planet for a period of time. And there's actually some evidence that that might have happened. So, so when we're talking about uh, this, should we choose 1750 or 1850, let's stick with when we had good instrumentation, right? And when we could actually uh, go over a period of years and if we need to go back further than that and make estimates, it turns out we can do that. And they still don't get us over 2C. So what I want to do with you is to share a few of these estimates with you. And the first one I want to look at is from Wikipedia. So let's actually see what some smart people are saying about what things look like at 1750. So this little picture from Wikipedia really gives context. We can see that if we go back over periods of, of hundreds and hundreds of years, we were running about uh, 2 to 3, uh, 0.2 to 0.3 C above the long-term average. Then around 1750, look, this is what some people want to pick on, are these low temperatures that happened right in the Little Ice Age and say that's really where we should start. I disagree with that. Um, but at any rate, we can see that even if we chose one of those points on this particular article 
and you can look at the references at the bottom of this slide on Wikipedia, even if we chose the lowest of low points, which is about negative 0.3 C, and go up to our current high, which is about 1.2. That gets us to about 1.5 C in total warming that's taken place. That's still not even close to this claim that, that is being made of 2 degrees C warming. So that's one source, Wikipedia. Another source, this um, website called temperaturerecord.org, and they actually cite their methodology down at the bottom. And I've read through that, and I uh, think you should read this through this too if you're one of these 2C people and look at the methodology they're using. This is very robust. These are good folks who are doing this research. And let's look at 1750. And if we actually go back, we can see what they've reconstructed in their analysis as our temperature. They say the temperature anomaly was minus 0.3 C which is, again, that other picture, and we're in the little ice age right there. So they're saying that was 1.22 C cooler than July of 2021. Well, I don't know about that particular, um, the reference to July of 2021, but they're certainly not saying that there's been 2 degrees C of rise. So, again, we do not meet this 2 C criterion from this website. And now I have a couple of articles from journals I want to show you. One is this article in Nature, August 25, 2016, early onset of industrial era warming across the oceans and continents. And here, if we look through the abstract, we can read the early onset of sustained significant warming in paleoclimate records and model simulations suggests that greenhouse forcing of industrial era warming commenced as early as the mid-19th century and included an enhanced equatorial ocean response mechanism. All right, so again, the idea is that that first initial period from 1750 to 1850, there was not much CO2 put into the atmosphere. And the CO2 that was put in had mitigating factors working against it. For example, the aerosol masking effect. So there may have been a little bit of rise, and we can actually get a great estimate of how much, if we actually want to know that, that period of time, 1750 to 1850, how much rise was there actually during that period. And here we have an article, uh, Importance of the Pre-Industrial Baseline in Determining the Likelihood of Exceeding the Paris Limits. And of course, our anti-hero Michael Mann is one of the authors of this paper. Um, but if we look through this paper, we can scroll down and right here we read the calculated mean difference between 1850 to 1900 as a baseline and the entire period 1401 to 1800 in different models ranges from roughly 0.1 0 to 0 0.18 C with a multi-model mean of 0 0.13 C with some dependence on the period analyzed due to the dip in greenhouse gases in 1600. So this yields an estimated warming to 1850 to 1900 with a 5 to 95% range of 0 0.02 C to 0 0.20 C. So this approach, however, assumes that the increase in CO2 since the Little Ice Age is largely anthropogenic in origin. So again, even with um, everything that did happen, all the CO2 that was released, it was possible some of that came from volcanoes or some other natural sources. So if we, if we attribute every bit of CO2 that went into the atmosphere to humans, to humans, uh, you know, uh, industry and the other ways were that we went about life during that period, and that's what they did here. They're saying we can't get past 0 0.20 from the climate accord, right? And so that would mean since we have risen 1.2 since that time, um, since that baseline was established, that the total amount is at most 1.4 C um, since 1750. So uh, look, it is just... Um, by the way, I just want to point out the source of this. This particular article was published in Nature Climate Change in July of 2017. So, look, 
this is not a battle we should be having. We should not be exaggerating the amount of global warming that's taken place to suit our purposes. The amount of warming that has taken place is already catastrophic at 1.2 C above the 1850 to 1900 baseline. What we're looking for in the future is 1.5 C by 2030 and easily 2C by 2050. These are absolutely catastrophic levels of CO2, and we are going to see widespread catastrophes and very sad times in the future. We don't need to exaggerate in order to make any points at all. It's already really bad, and I am really sad about that. And uh, I just don't want all of this sort of fabrication out there in the um, Twitterverse and YouTubeverse and uh, all the other places where this misinformation is being put out to make us think that things are so much worse than they are. They are already really bad at 1.2C, and that's where we need to be. We need to be in agreement with the scientists. We need to be in agreement with the peer reviewed literature. We need to trust the way that scientists are going about this analysis and not think there is some conspiracy to say things are less worse than they are. Because believe me, people who know this stuff already know how bad it is and they are saying so. All right, so that is my rant of the day. Um, Look, I am starting a new blog. I'm not sure how much I'm going to work on it, but you can find my new blog at climatedisaster.net. So that is the website where I'm posting my blog. Hopefully you'll have a look. In the meantime, this is Elliot Jacobson. See you later.